Girl, quick waiver wire segment for all you peasants out there that didn't draft a perfect team. Yeah, I might be 3-0 and in E-Town get down atop the goddamn standings. Top dog sitting on the throne. I'll probably finish 3-9 and in 13. Whatever, whatever, whatever. We need to pick up players off the waiver wire. And today's, this is a big week for people that didn't drop their fab yet this year because we have a lot of serious running back injuries. And that's going to be the theme of this week. It's these running back injuries, man, because we have Dalvin Cook hurt. We have... Dave Montgomery hurt. We have DeAndre Swift hurt. And those are three big backups. It's something I say in the beginning of the year. It's like, I don't, one, I condone drafting your own handcuffs. There's this theory around fantasy football that you should draft other people's handcuffs. I just feel like that's the dumbest. I don't understand, like, they people will be like, oh, it's for upside. It's like, that just doesn't, you're just saying a word that doesn't actually help you win a fantasy football league. If you drafted DeAndre Swift and you have Jamal Williams, you're feeling pretty fucking good about it. You drafted David Montgomery and you have Khalil Herbert, feeling pretty fucking good about it, okay? You drafted Dalvin Cook and then drafted Alexander Madison. You know what I'm saying? Pisses me off. I get it. If you own those guys and you didn't draft them, it's good too. But if you draft your handcuffs, it's secure. It makes sense in seasonal leagues. It makes sense. You're drafting insurance behind the guys that you use premium capital on so that you don't run into these situations where now you fuck. You got to drop your whole fab or someone beat you to it. And now you don't even have your RB1 or your RB2 anymore. But these guys, one of the other things I talk about during the offseason all the time when it comes to handcuffs is like I don't draw I'll never draft a handcuff unless I know for sure the dude behind him is getting at least 85 percent of the work that this dude was going to get right like if if Zeke goes down we know Tony Pollard is the clear handcuff if DeAndre Swift goes down we know Jamal Williams the clear handcuff same thing with Dalvin Cook Alexander Madison there's not as many clear-cut cases in the NFL today right but we're starting to see more and more that maybe there are maybe I just lied to you okay and today's episode is about David Montgomery going down Dalvin Cook going down DeAndre Swift going down, and a couple underrated wide receivers that I do think we should blow some bank on, actually, underratedly. You can get my full waiver wire rankings, along with fab suggestions, fab guidance, and uh, whether or not I'd spend a number one waiver wire on any of these players on bdge.co. If you're a big dog member, you get the waiver wire rankings weekly. You get the weekly rankings every week in season, along with the private access to our Q and Assault. So bdge.co, you'll see products thing on the menu. I'll just go through the top guys. So the way I have them ranked right now in terms of those three running backs are Khalil Herbert, Jamal Williams, and Alexander Madison. I would spend the number one waiver wire on any of those guys if any of them are sitting on your waiver wire. There's a good chance that none of them are. There's a good chance that one of them is, okay? So with Khalil Herbert, you have David Montgomery going down with like an ankle and a knee injury. Apparently, the latest report we have is that he is actually day-to-day, and there is a good chance that he suits up in week four. The reason that I have Khalil Herbert ranked higher than a dude like Jamal Williams. So we know DeAndre Swift has his AC sprain, and there's a really good chance he's not back till week seven. So if you're looking for instant production, Jamal Williams might actually be the move. And I have, I have like Khalil Herbert, my fab suggestion is like 40% on him. I have Jamal Williams at like 35%. So there, you know, it's kind of a coin toss, whoever you prefer. If you need someone to slide in right away, I think Khalil Herbert is the long-term play. I think there's a really good chance that Khalil Herbert just takes over that backfield altogether. I mean, he ran for 157 yards on Sunday. That would have been a career high for David Montgomery. This dude comes in, rips off 157. David Montgomery's never had more than 146 in a game. Cool Herbert is a fantastic runner, and the offense only wants to run the ball. They don't want Justin Fields to throw the ball. So it's Cool Herbert's job right now if David Montgomery's out. Obviously, if he plays, it's going to be a wishy-washy situation. I don't know if I'd even feel comfortable throwing Cool Herbert into my lineup, but if David Montgomery's active and we see him where like Cool Herbert's 15 touches and David Montgomery gets 10. That's a trend, all right? We get two weeks in a row with this shit. We're starting to see him get more and more involved. I wouldn't be surprised if he just takes over the backfield altogether by the end of the season. So I think he has more like league-winning upside potential. With DeAndre Swift out, likely for week four, likely for week five, have their bye in week six, which would give him weeks to get back. We know when DeAndre Swift is back, like he is the guy there. I know Mal Williams has been getting a lot of touches, and he's actually probably usable as a flex play because this offense has been pretty fucking good overall. He's getting a lot of goal line work. So, again, I don't blame you for going Jamal Williams over Khalil Herbert if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that, though, okay? But they're neck and neck. I think both of them deserve a fat percentage of your fab. I think both of them for sure can go number one on your waiver wire. But I like Khalil Herbert's upside over the long run. He seems like a guy that can go nuts over the last like five, six weeks of the season and be a real league winner. Alexander Madison, this is the same fucking beat we've been dancing to for years now. Dalvin Cook, this was one of the only predictable injuries coming into the year. No one's injury prone except the dude who dislocates his shoulder, right? If you follow any of the doctors on fantasy Twitter, they've told you that every time he dislocates his shoulder, his re-injury rate for that happening again again throughout the NFL season gets higher and higher. It's a reason why he's done it every fucking year so far in the NFL. And it just just happened again. Now I do want to, I want y'all to remember though, this happened last year, right? He got hurt. 
And then he was like supposed to be out, plays the next fucking game. I think it was a Thursday night football game. I think he ripped off like 170 yards on the ground. So Dalvin Cook can absolutely play through this. And I believe the plan is for him to wear a brace and play through it, which is why I have Alexander Madison ranked underneath Cook. Because we've seen Cook play at less than 100%, and we've seen the Vikings ride him into the ground. Now, his re-injury risk, the chance of him getting hurt again, the chance of him re-injuring this shoulder is extremely fucking high, which is why even if Dalvin Cook is projected to play, you still need to blow the bank on Alexander Madison because anytime Cook is out, you basically just rank Madison exactly where you ranked Cook. And honestly, at this point, the way Cook is playing, I might even rank Madison higher if Dalvin Cook is out of the picture than I would have if Dalvin Cook is playing. But the shoulder injury is a serious concern. Very likely he plays this week but very likely he re-injures it at some point this season. So all three of these guys are obviously like the crown jewels of this week. But Romeo Dobbs needs to be very, very seriously considered as a prize jewel of this week if you need a wide receiver. This was the first week that the rookie who went nuts this preseason looked fantastic on the field, a little bit raw, but he is the most talented wide receiver it looks like right now for them, got real playtime. Week one, he saw 57% of the snaps. Week two, 37% of the snaps. With both Watkins and Christian Watson out in week three, Dobbs played 89% of the snaps. The only player that had more than him was Lazard at 90%. But Lazard, I feel like, is what he is. He's not a great separator. He's going to get some red zone work. But Dobbs feels like the actual upside possession receiver here, and you obviously want that attached with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Dobbs led the team with eight targets, caught all eight of those targets, 73 yards, had a touchdown as well. So if I need a wide receiver... I don't know who's available on your waiver wire right now, obviously, and I'm throwing some low-hanging fruit up there. Like, Traylon Burks should obviously be owned everywhere. I would blow a lot of fab on him, 25 to 30%. Same thing with Romeo Dobbs, 25 to 30%. And yes, I would use my number one waiver wire on him if none of those running backs are available. Gallup is the next guy on my list who was inactive, surprisingly, last night for Monday Night Football, but he seems very, very close to returning, and he will probably slot in as the wide receiver too sooner rather than later. I don't think it'll be immediately. I think we see Gallup get like, you know, 30 to 40% of the snaps and then maybe 50% of the next week and then 65 and then 80 so it'll be a slow overtaking but by the time he's up to that 80 to 90 percent route running role that will be bike on the field and it will be his job as the number two behind cd lamb who's been wildly fucking disappointing so he could even be the 1a 1b there in that offense so gallop's the guy to you know really keep an eye on of course isaiah mckenzie's the dude that we've gone back and forth on loved him in the preseason had a huge game for buffalo this sunday and it seems like he's taking more and more over that role i still think it's going to be weeks of digs weeks of davis was also clearly injured in this one so i think once he gets a little bit more healthy be a little less isaiah mckenzie the dolphins were blitzing like a motherfucker out there so he needs to get the ball out really quickly to Isaiah McKenzie in this one. So I don't I don't know if that was predictable or not. So I wouldn't go nuts on him, but I mean, he's a key piece of this Buffalo offense, of course. George Pickens needs to be, I, I don't know how many times I could watch this dude make like absolutely insane fucking plays on the field and still think he needs to be running 30% of the routes. Pickens, obviously a target this week. Russell Gage, Zay Jones, Matt Collins is awesome. Matt Collins fucking balled last week. I still am a little bit hesitant because once Renfro gets back on the field, Hollins gets pulled back a little bit. Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, yes, he had the big game and he's been like outproducing Devontae Adams, but let's not fucking act like we expect that shit to continue. Matt Collins is there, Noah Brown, Sky Moore I still think is worth picking up as the season progresses. But again, y'all can catch all of this on the actual website. It's all there for you to see. I would suggest you do it in your pair of Felix Grays. Now, if you don't know what Felix Gray is, it is a, a beautiful product. It is my favorite product I've ever purchased for under $100, okay? Felix Grays are blue light blocking glasses. We get blue light shot at our eyeballs from all over the place nowadays, from monitors, from laptops, from cameras, from cell phones, especially in TV you're watching at night. That shit keeps you up, right? That light that hits you from your phone when you're scrolling fucking TikTok, when you're on our TikTok at BDGE double underscore, when you're over there and you're 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, minute, fuck, I got to go to bed. You're not tired. It's because the light is telling your body not to produce melatonin. Put these bad boys on, boom, it starts producing melatonin even when you're looking at cell phone, all right? Felix Gray's blue light blocking glasses are the single best thing you could do for your sleep ever, ever, all right? So go check out Felix Gray. Use promo code BDGE15 when you check out. You're going to get 15% off your purchase. I promise you will not be disappointed with these things. I absolutely love them. They're not orange lenses. They don't make you look like a crazy person. They actually make you look smart. I've got a lot of compliments on them, which obviously is not a very high bar for me to go up and actually look like a smart person. So yeah, Felix Gray, promo code BDG15. Let's move over to the tight ends real quick. David Njoku had a big, big game on Thursday Night Football. He's someone that we expect to get more and more involved. They're starting to run actual plays for him. He looked great. Tyler Conklin is the other one that we need to actually keep an eye on. Tyler Conklin, I believe, is a top three tight end in fantasy right now. 18 receptions, 
138 yards and a touchdown. Joe Flacco throwing the ball like a crazy fucking person, man. In half PPR, his worst game was seven points. 9.4, 7, 12.4. This dude is really, really involved in doing a lot better than a lot of your favorite fantasy tight ends. So Tyler Conklin needs to be someone that probably should get picked up. I also like Evan Ingram, man, um, because Evan Ingram is now attached to a Jacksonville offense that looks fucking awesome. All right? So those are a couple guys that I love. Again, full list is on bdg.co. Defense. The Green Bay Packers will put you up a minimum 12 fantasy points this week, and probably 15 fantasy points this week. They're playing at Lambeau. They're playing against New England at home. 10-point fucking favorites against the Mac Jones-less Patriots offense that won't be able to move the damn ball. Green Bay, you need to... I would actually spend fab. I never spend money on defenses for streaming. I would spend money on Green Bay. Philadelphia's pass rush was incredible against Washington. I know their offensive line is kind of wishy-washy at this point, but Philadelphia against Jacksonville, I think, is another really, really good pickup. And then my sleeper is Detroit against Seattle. I like Detroit's uh, defense right now. They're ferocious. They're playing like Dan Campbell wishes he was out there on the fucking field, but they're doing it through him, through his soul. And uh, I think they're going to unleash on Seattle's front five. All right. So that is a waiver wire episode for this week. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if any of those running backs are actually available on your waiver wire. They are in some of my leagues. They are not in other ones. I know some people get mad. Like, you keep naming dudes that aren't that aren't available. I'm like, dude, how am I going to fucking do a waiver wire video this week that doesn't include Herbert and Madison and Jamal Williams and all these running backs that get hurt? You know what I'm saying? God damn, y'all got me cheeked up on a Tuesday morning. All right, if you enjoyed, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and make sure you go check out Felix Gray. Link will be down below. Use promo code BDG15 when you check out. And if you want to become a Big Dog member, you want in on Private Q and Assault every Saturday, which I will try to help you with your sit starts, which are not, I'm, you know, I'm fucking terrible at it, but I'll try my best, I promise. BG.co. I love y'all. I'm out.